raw. This is your house? Oh, wow. This is, oh, this is quite the place. That's my place. And that's raw. She drew that. It's a good drawing. You know, it's classic. Mm -hmm. And it's all done with native wood and stuff, you know. Yeah, that's cool. And, it, and it's very strong, you know. I haven't you know, pulled this together and that together and, and huh. sew it. And, Since the 80s, the number of homeless has been steadily increasing. President Reagan is often cited as being the cause of increased homelessness, mainly because as governor of California, he signed the Lanterman Petra Shore Act, which disallowed state-run mental institutions to hold patients without their consent unless they were a clear danger to themselves or others. The act went into effect in 1972 in the state of California and soon became the gold standard across the U.S. Rather than reforming the institution's current procedures, patients were released, hospitals began to close, and over that time, nearly 400,000 people with mental illness were turned onto the streets with no available housing replacement. Community-funded programs, neighborhoods, and citizens were expected to shoulder the burden of helping the newly homeless. Blankets, clothing, food, bus vouchers can get done through Katie if it's an emergency and it needs to be done. Like. There's just so many resources and so many people are just dependent on the share house. And I think a lot of it is like, I'll find people that live down here that find someone new in town that's lost. Well, they bring them here because they need resources. And then they're like, oh, this is a great place to be because all my resources are right here instead of out here. Yeah. How long have you been homeless? Since July. Since July, but yes, you've I mean. lived in Vancouver since 1992? Yep. yep. This time I've been out here a little over a year. Right about a year. I came out last October. We can see the impact of those policy changes in Vancouver today. That impact is very evident to Vancouver residents in downtown. Litter including drug paraphernalia, sleeping bags, tarps, and misplaced shopping carts are a few visible indications of an increased number of homeless in the area. Drugs that shouldn't be, that cause most to live like this. Um, some of the issues are drugs. I mean, we know it's drug and mental illness. And then you have a few people like Jessica who are just trying to get out of a bad situation and then get stuck once, they, um, once they're making that change. So I'm yeah. Heidi, and you're Jessica. And Jessica. It was started, let's see, this is, as a group, we've been doing it now, what, Nancy knows, but about, I mean, almost two years, I think, in February, it'll be two years, as starting as a group, but prior to that, when I moved in, I was just doing the um, Marco wall, and then Nancy one day was like, well, what are you doing, and I'm like, well, I clean, just clean along the wall, I was doing it Tuesday mornings before trash, and then Nancy's like, I'll help you, and then Nancy, uh, and I were out there doing it for a long time and then we started talking about it at meetings. Well, a couple months we were out there doing it. And then it ended up that we decided as a neighborhood to form a group. Nancy really championed, championed it and it just became this thing. And now we do the whole wall. So we had one guy who had taken a bunch of branches off that tree in the corner, piled them up there in front of the tree about where Ben is now and had a camp back there, and he was there for a long time. Um, that's where we started finding needles on a regular basis. And when we finally, one day, everybody was gone, that's where we found 18 needles. And then when the city, I heard, when operations came in and cleaned it out, they, there was a ton of other needles hidden in there. 
Though there are many camps all across the greater Vancouver area, we are seeing crowds congregating to downtown, where the majority of resources and support services are grouped. To be fed, sheltered, and clothed is all possible within a few blocks of the 13th Street Sharehouse location. The reason most people hang around here is because the Sharehouse serves three meals a day. Mm -hmm. And they used to have showers and laundry. Right. Because a lot of these people, uh, some of them come down from like Hazeldale every day. I know people that ride their bike from Hazeldale every day, but camp out there. and because this is the only place in Clark County besides going all the way over to Multnomah in Portland. Overcrowding one area causes concerns of unsanitary conditions, violence, and theft in surrounding neighborhoods. It would concentrate bad elements. You know, you just have a concentration of bad elements, meaning then, then all the surrounding neighborhoods will have to deal with all those bad elements um, in a concentrated version, then you can't, you can't deal with them. You gotta keep them spread out a little bit. You gotta let people be in their own territories. It won't kill you to be out here, but it'll drive you crazy. Right? You know, yeah. it will. I mean, it literally, and that's not a joke. You mm -hmm. know, um, it's, you can, you'll, most likely you'll survive all the weather conditions. It, it's going to get rough. Sure. But you know, you're going to be driven insane. One of the issues is, you know, the neighborhoods are feeling a lot of the impact, like Esther Short neighborhood and Halk neighborhood, and. Um, you know, the neighborhoods have felt for the past 26 years that if you disperse the social services throughout the county, that would be a better way. That's why I moved up here because it's too loud. Um, there's so much garbage and there's just, sometimes there's bad people that come down here. They come from Oregon or they come from like mm. Hazeldale. Bad people come from Oregon or Hazeldale. When you say bad people, what are you talking about? Rapists. Rapists. So people that, so. Yeah. But just dude having a place to shower yeah. and sleep and not have to worry about getting assaulted, getting jumped, having to worry about if gangs are going to come after you because they're going to gang rape you or some dumb shit, you know what I mean? Like, I've been getting some crazy ass text messages from a lot of different people and it's not okay. People out here? Yeah. So, have you, do you know firsthand of assaults that have happened down there? Yeah. I haven't. You've been assaulted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And is there any help for when, a place that when women are assaulted down there, you and get any help from anyone? Oh, they just brush it off. The clustering of resources has been an issue in the past also. In 1991, there was a local hearing discussing the need for spacing and even dispersal of human services facilities across all of Vancouver. Here are some of the concerns from locals at that time. To support a non-regulated siting environment, in my opinion, will continue to produce just what has been produced already, an over-concentration. You have to find a solution. One cannot just throw up his hands and say there is nothing out there for me, nor can you say that I'm not having it in my backyard. We all had concerns and fears and, and problems, but I think as the task force proceeded uh, through, the, through the subsequent um, weeks and months, uh, we learned uh, the concerns of each other. We learned to respect those. Uh, the conclusion I came to, just speaking for myself, was in fact there are a number of problems that need to be addressed. It seems to me clear that there is a kind of discrimination going on here. Maybe it's benign, but it seems to me there's a clear pattern. Services are available to people in downtown Vancouver neighborhoods, and key services are simply not available in other areas of the community. This area right here is the area of debate, and it has been. If you look at that in relation to the urban service area, it seems pretty small. You put the word impact in, in big letters because somehow we have to study these things in terms of their impact. I want to go on the record as saying that I will vote to support the ordinances because I believe the neighborhoods need protection. From that hearing came some positive changes and it was found that it was necessary to relocate some services to outlying areas nearer to the underserved homeless groups. This was an improvement, but not enough to really solve the issue. The city of Vancouver has a siting ordinance that would space agencies so they would get further out into the county and help more people. Uh -huh. um, do you think that would be helpful rather than all being uh, I, I think concentrated guys... in one part of the county? Um, no, no, definitely not concentrated. When that, that's totally, it, it, that's, see, that's out of the box wrong. I think everything should be dispersed anyways. Like, 
just for transportation, just for everything, the resources that it costs. Like it's expensive to come back down here all the time and then to stay down here because you don't want to miss a meal, which means it limits to where you can go and where you can job search. When half these job search places are all the way out on 124th and in Mill Plain and Fisher's Landing were these jobs that they could get, you know, but they're stuck here and they're like, oh, I can go to the library and apply online because I can get back for a meal on time and then I can go home at six when everything's closed. So, so. a lot of this is meal generated. Yeah, a lot of it's m resource generated. Do you know any other place in either Clark County or Vancouver city limits where you can go and get a regular hot meal? No, nope, no place. Yeah. There's safety, there's food, when people don't have food, there's water. So a lot of people come down come down here from Orchards, Hazeldale, all over Vancouver because this is really the only the only place that does um, three meals a day, gives uh, um, you know supplies and everything. So if there was more spread out throughout the city, then it would be less people in each spot.